Have you ever done something in vain? That is, have you attempted it, held on to it, tried, studied, whatever it was, but you just didn't get there in the end? It was, it was nothing. It came to nothing. It disappointed. It might be the the uh, the the job interview you prepped for and studied and learned all there was to know about the company, the job, and then you go for the interview, but it's all in vain and you end up because of life circumstances or something else doing doing another job or not getting a job or whatever it might happen to be. You feel like you've wasted that time. Uh, you might hold on to something in vain. Maybe you've got a collectible thing or you, something you hope is going to be collectible. It's going to make it big and you hold on for it for years and then the, there is no market for it and so it's been held in vain. Having something in vain is a, is a terrible feeling in the end. But there's something that you do not want to have in vain that is not to be received in vain. And it's in our passage day in uh, 2 Corinthians as we press on. <clears throat> Paul's been talking about the, the new job, the new way of seeing, the new life, the new message that we've got of uh, serving Jesus, that he's died for all and therefore all have died, that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him might become the righteous of God. It's a free gift of God. It's a wonderful gift. But can you receive it in vain? Well, let's pray and get into it. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, that we would never receive the gospel in vain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in chapter 6 and we pick it up at verse 1. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. You might think, well, it's a funny thing to put in the middle of this letter. It's a great statement, but how does it belong? How does it fit? Well, we've seen already some, you know, some devotions ago that the problem that the Corinthian church are facing is that false teachers are on their way or arrived already. They call themselves the super apostles. They're in it for the money. They come with letters of recommendation and they are huge deals in the church. They are famous and well regarded and have letters of recommendation from all around. And so they're kind of the preaching rock stars of the early church. However, they're preaching a false gospel, as we'll find out more about that later in the letter. And Paul has been defending his own ministry, saying he's got a, a ministry of the spirit, not of the letter, that he doesn't need these letters of recommendation because they themselves are his letter of recommendation, that they've seen the, the glory of the gospel, not in bright, amazing productions and fancy oratory and so on, but that they've been witnesses to the glory of the gospel as they themselves have received it and been transformed by it. The gospel of reconciliation, they know that Jesus has paid for them and that they've accepted him and trusted uh, that they're right in the right relationship with God now because of it. They have open access in prayer. They have uh, this new life to live, but they've been told that their gospel is defective in various ways and that Paul has lied to them. He hasn't explained the whole truth. And so the gospel is hopeless. And so they actually need what they're offering instead. And that is why Paul will say here, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Um, that is impossible to give up on Jesus. You can hold on for years and years believing the truth and then uh, be convinced by a lie or just become bitter and think, well, where are these promises? How come the you know, circumstances have happened to me that oh, I thought I was a Christian and so God was going to give me better blessings and, and I was not I was going to be above all these things. That, I mean, some of those things come from the lies that Satan tells and that false teachers might tell us as well. And so the temptation is always there to give up on the gospel, give up on Jesus to say, well, I want a better Jesus, a different Jesus. Someone's told me that the Jesus I'm believing in is not right. And or to give up altogether and say he's not worth it, uh, though he promised heaven and promised eternal life. It's not worth it because of what I'm going through now. 
And so Paul says, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. It will be in vain if they give up. It'll be come to nothing. It'll be hopeless. They won't get the job. It won't be worth anything. All the years that they've stood firm and thought about their faith and tried to live for the Lord Jesus and uh, rejoiced in the salvation they have and the free gift of God, it will be in vain if they give up on it because once you give up on Jesus, well, the source of your salvation is is him. And so uh, that, that is the, the possibility to be led astray by lies, whether they're lies within the church or lies from without the church, into a position where God's grace has been received in vain because you've given up on you. So it's wasted, it's nothing. And so the one thing that can save you is gone. And he says, I tell you this because in the time of my favor, I heard you in the day of salvation. I helped you is a quote from the Old Testament. And he's pointing to the fact that this day, while ever it's called today, um, is the time where we can receive the gospel. And so if we don't receive the gospel in this day, it's this day, which is the day of salvation, then uh, it'll be gone. We won't have salvation. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. and Now is the day of salvation. The the word days, uh, there's a lot of confusion uh, amongst Christians about different days in the Bible. The Old Testament uh, talks about the day that is coming, the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. It also talks about the end days or the end times. Uh, and look, that's also tied up with the judgment day coming. But here's the thing, uh, in the coming of the Lord Jesus, judgment day has begun the day is not like a 24-hour period where it's all going to happen uh no jesus has brought in the day it's the age of salvation we are in this period now this is also the end days not because something's happened in the last three weeks which has triggered biblical prophecy fulfillment which happened before no but because jesus dying on the cross and rising in, open up the new age, the age of salvation, but also the last days. So we've been in the last days since Jesus rose again, and we'll be in them until he returns. This whole period is what the Bible refers to the end times. And so the characteristics that Jesus talks about at the end times are always present. They have been since he was around, the wars and rumours of wars, the earthquakes, the famines and the troubles, the, the, the difficulties that Christians face, right? We are always in there. There were some better periods as uh, through history and in different parts of the world. The fire is raging of persecution more than in other parts of the world. And so for some might think, well, hang on, these are the end days. But the others are thinking, well, no, that's a long way off. Where is the Lord Jesus? Where is he coming? But these are the end days. And these kinds of things are going to happen to God's people all around. And so these end days also are the days of salvation or the day of salvation. One period of time. Now that day will end. The end day times will come to an end when Jesus returns and the day of salvation will be wrapped up when it's no longer possible to turn to the Lord Jesus, when it's no longer possible to receive the gospel and have the salvation that he's offered, which is a great uh, warning for us, isn't it, that we should keep clinging on. And it will not be in vain. We will have what he's promised when he comes. Uh, none of the promises that we've seen so far are for ease here on earth. No, we're, we're jars of clay, we're cracked, we're pressured, and we're going to see uh, some more of that tomorrow when he Paul really gets into uh, the difficulties that he's been through and experienced in the first of the great long lists of the, the difficulties. He's, he's mentioned them before, that, that when we're you know, in struggling, God has been comforting us. He's talked about uh, some different things that separate him from the false apostles uh, and so on who are after a life of ease. Uh, we'll get to that. But uh, God's promise is for the future. He's with us now. He gives us joy and thankfulness now. He gives us brothers and sisters and so many blessings. But it's not uh, going to be a life of uh, health, wealth and, and uh, you know, just laughs all the time and giggles as we bumble through and enjoy life as conquerors or anything like that. 
No, no, no. We've got to keep serving because the victory's been won, but it's been won for the future. And so that's why Paul talked at the start of chapter 5 about longing for the future, longing to be home out of this tent and in our true home in the future. You've got to have, remember that's the goal, and then you will not receive God's grace in vain. You'll king on to the gospel. You'll know that its uh, promise is good because of what Jesus has done. He has conquered death. He will deliver. He's always faithful to his promises. But for a lot of times uh, in our life, we're just going to have to wait on him and see what he'll do and, and, and not give up because now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of God's favor when we embrace Christ and he's good for his word and he has us in his family and gives us uh, that future that we would not have had before. Uh, we would have faced judgment, as Paul has talked about in chapter 5, uh, with nothing to protect us. But Jesus has done it all. And so do not receive God's grace in vain. I want to urge you, as I urge myself and urge people around, that there's those who haven't received it at all, and they need to receive it. But those who have received it, us believers, we need to not receive God's grace in vain and not give up, not be persuaded uh, away, not listen to false teachers and lies, to check everything against the scriptures, to go go and do the thinking ourselves when someone tells us something new and novel. Uh, let's let's go fact check it first. Uh, the, the, but today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of God's favour. And we enjoy that and we'll go on enjoying that while we keep trusting the Lord Jesus. This is not to give us... Um, uh, pause and create doubts in our minds about whether we're true believers or not. But it is to say that there are lies out there that can take you away from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so be on your guard and remember to hold on to him as the most precious treasure of all that we have in this jar of clay. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your precious promises, for your wonderful gospel, for the treasure that the Lord Jesus is. We pray, please, that you'll protect us from lies, help us to thoroughly check everything against the scriptures, to keep looking to the Lord Jesus Christ and not to receive your grace in vain. Father, we thank you that your grace isn't vain, that it is not empty, it is full and wonderful and you are going to fulfill everything. We've seen it already in the Lord Jesus Christ in his conquering death. We know he's the king and so help us to cling on when it's tough Help us to remember his promises, to remember that none of this is unexpected in life as your servants and your people, but to keep going, looking forward, enjoy to the day that's coming when you will reunite us with our brothers and sisters in Christ and with the Lord Jesus and with you on the throne. Father, please shape our minds, our lives around that future. Help us to live for you each day. Live for the one who died for us and was raised again. In Jesus' name we pray and for his glory. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion next time.